I love tower defence. The Switch does not though, having a distinct lack of options even two years in. How does Duke of Defence shape up then? Does it help fill the gap? It isn't anything breathtaking, but my short experience with it was certainly a pleasant one. Duke of Defence has an incredibly basic story. You become the Duke of Defence quite literally and have to protect your lands from those who wish to destroy and harm it. Nothing serious, and it has a lot of humour, some of which was genuinely funny to me. Evil wizards are never too serious, are they? Duke of Defence is a basic foray into the tower defence genre and plays similar to others such as Kingdom Rush. It doesn't reinvent the wheel by any stretch of the imagination. You get gold to build towers, you have to protect a castle, and you upgrade your towers, although this is done in a rather unique way. All the tropes are here, and to be fair, they work mechanically very well. You place towers over trees, and there are a total of 9 all upgradable towers ranging from basic arrow towers, which you unlock right at the start, to ice and fire ones, which you unlock as you progress through the story. You upgrade towers not by using gold though, but by standing under them, which slowly levels them up, allowing you to upgrade elements like fire rate and range, as well as a variety of others based on which tower it is you are working on. These towers are of course used to attack enemies, both land and air, big and small. Enemy variety unfortunately isn't the highest, which is a big shame. One of my favourite parts of the Kingdom Rush series is seeing the massive volume of enemies expanding as I play through the games, from the first levels to the end ones. Bosses add some much needed variety, but it's not substantial enough to make too much of a difference overall. The biggest issue though? Honestly, the lack of graphical charm is incredibly grating. I am definitely not one of the many who moan about pixel art indie games, but to me, Duga Defense is really quite ugly. It is just so bland and lacking personality. It feels like the development team were told to make a pixel art game, and this is the generic result. Nowadays, you need your game to stand out, and this just doesn't cut it. There is a somewhat light RPG system in place, you unlock tokens after you complete a level and you can use them to work on several different trees which unlock abilities for your character, who you do control independently from the towers. I like it when tower defence games employ these kind of hero characters who you can use, but aside from that there just isn't too much going on. Duke of Defence is a competent tower defence game, nothing more, nothing less. If you love the genre, here is another game for you to play. If you don't, it won't suddenly make you realise how incredible of a genre it is. It's plain and simple, really. Fundamentally, it is a generic game in the genre, and that is neither a good or bad thing, just a reality. I would say if you're a fan of tower defence games, it is 100% going to satisfy your quench for them. But if you're not, I really would avoid this. There are definitely better ones on the Switch. For example, Defence Grid 2, which I reviewed earlier in the year and I will link below, or alternatively Pixel Junk Monsters 2, which is a superbly charming game in the genre. As a result, Duke of Defence gets a half heart from me, mainly because it failed to leave too much of an impression after I finished my time with it. I hope you enjoyed another quick review. If you're interested in more in-depth breakdown of Duke of Defence, be sure to check out the written version of the review, which will be live when you are watching this. Aside from that, be sure to subscribe for more reviews and top 10 lists and other indie-based content. Here at Nindy Nexus, we are aiming to champion the indie scene on the Nintendo Switch. My name is Tom, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.